Welcome to this video. The topic, as you'll have seen from the title, is ivermectin. Now, there's been quite a lot of debate about this, and uh, material has been reviewed from social media, from multiple sites, for making false claims. So I won't be making any claims. I'll just be looking at the evidence and the literature. And it goes without saying that you would never, ever take any medicine as a result of anything that was said on this channel. You always go through your own doctor. That's why you have your own personalised doctors. Now, ivermectin is a drug that's fairly well known. It's been, I think it came out in 1975. And in, in the UK, if we want to know about drugs, we go to the British National Formulary under the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence. And there we find information about this drug. And what we find is it's actually indicated for parasitic infections. So uh, for topical use on the skin, for various types of worms and parasites. And it's been used extensively overseas for parasites, including nasty condition of the skin called scabies. Um, there's quite a few limitations on its use. Um, so it's, uh, it's not advised for various uh, conditions uh, like pregnancy and uh, lactation. I don't think it's, uh, what does it say? Manufacturers advise avoid on pregnancy. Manufacturers advise avoid on breastfeeding, hepatic payment. Manufacturers advise caution. So we can see that this is a, this drug, like all others, it's got to be used specifically for a specific indication prescribed by your own doctor. It's not a straightforward, simple matter. It's not like taking a vitamin supplement. This is a completely different category of a, of a substance. And it also does have some drug uh, interactions, which we might have... Where have we got the interactions? There are some interactions with other drugs because th th this can happen when you give one drug, it can interact with some other medicines. So here we see uh, it uh, can interact with this drug here, which is a oral anticoagulant, this drug here, which is a, that's another anti-parasite, uh, 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 roundworms and hookworms. And that's warfarin, which is called Coumadin in the United States. So um, I think I've got that message across now. There's always a degree of complexity to the medications and these have to be prescribed by doctors. Right now, but let's get on, let's get on to looking at uh, the, 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 this medicine in a little more detail now. What, what's sort of known about it? Um, so there's in vitro activity uh, against viruses on the lab bench in glass. But we've seen this with other drugs that, that they've been uh, good in uh, vitro activity, but not necessarily transposing in vivo into the living subject. But good against a wide range of viruses in vitro. Uh, and in vitro antiviral studies have been shown to work uh, some efficacy against dengue, influenza, Zika virus. Uh, in vitro antiviral activity has been demonstrated against SARS coronavirus 2. So it's getting interesting already. Big reduction in viral numbers after 48 hours in in vitro studies. Worldwide use uh, for treating COVID-19. Um, it's been used unofficially in quite a few places. But what can we make of this data is what we need to look at. But it's been used extensively. Apparently about 3.7 billion doses have been used over the past 30 years for treating parasites. So what we're looking at is a drug that's established for treating parasitic infections. Now, for some time on this channel, we've been looking at information from the East Virginia Medical School Protocol. And let's just look at that briefly on, the, uh, on, on their site now. And again, we can go to the live feed from the East Virginia Medical School, which is here. Um... Yep. So um, we've, this, is, this has got some very interesting, useful graphics on. So we can see they advocate this thing called the Math Plus Protocol and that they're part of this frontline COVID-19 critical care alliance group by the looks of this. And we've seen this diagram several times before where we have viral replication in the early stages, viral debris, ongoing immune dysregulation as we've seen. And they're clearly recommending Invermectin as part of their treatment protocol. 
And uh, the, the key thing about this disease they're stay, saying is that various drugs need to be given at the right time, which is, is, is true. And here they're looking at various pharmacological interventions. I'm not going to go through them all, but Invermectin, they're saying benefit, benefit, benefit. So this is clearly uh, th 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 their, their view of uh, this drug is um, efficacious um, according to their, 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 their protocols, or that's their belief. So let, let's look at what's, uh, a few highlights of what they've said. Uh, basically, to condense what they've said, and if I've misrepresented them, I hope they'll uh, come on and correct this, but uh, this is my understanding of what they've said. So they've said that uh, ivermectin is useful for pre-exposure prophylaxis in high-risk patients or potential patients. Um, pre-exposure prophylaxis, so they're saying this can be used to prevent COVID-19 infection or has use as a possible indication in pre-exposure prophylaxis. Symptomatic patients at home mildly symptomatic patients in hospital and patients with progressive respiratory symptoms and they consider it later on they could use the term wonder drug which um, I must say it's a bit of a surprising term for, for a, um, a website like this to use but nevertheless that's what that's what they say. Uh, ivermectin inhibits viral replication and has potent anti-inflammatory properties uh, as steroids indeed have anti-inflammatory properties so we know that can be useful. There's the potential for serious drug interactions. I'm glad they mentioned that. Um, additional studies are urgently required to confirm these very impressive preliminary findings. So this is what they're saying. And this is the point of this video, really. Um, I, I think the evidence for ivermectin efficacy in COVID-19 has accumulated to the point now where regulatory authorities around the world and governments around the world need to be looking at this seriously to decide if they want to include it in, in their treatment protocols. I think that's kind of where we are at. So a new paper published on the 7th of December, um, review of the emerging, emerging evidence demonstrating the efficacy of ivermectin in the prophylaxis and treatment of COVID-19. 17th of December, and this is from this group, Frontline COVID-19 Critical Care Alliance. And we're going to look at their site uh, in a minute. We've got a, I've got a live feed of their site there. But just before we do that, we'll notice their one sentence summary of the accumulated information. Um, review of recent available clinical trial, trial results demonstrate efficacy of ivermectin in prophylaxis and treatment of COVID-19. So that is a cut and paste from their, from their site. So let's look at this uh, site and see if these people are credible. Uh, here we are. So um, Frontline COVID-19 Critical Care Alliance, direct from their site. Um, now, here we have the, uh, the authors and here we have their affiliations and we can see they're from reputable organisations. Now here we have their uh, enhanced uh, abstract. So this group was set up in March 2020 as an expert panel uh, called the Frontline COVID-19 Critical Care Alliance. So read through that yourself and, and see what it says. Um, but basically they're expressing dissatisfaction here. Based on a recent series of negative published therapeutic trials resulting results, in particular the Solidarity Trial, this virtually eliminates any treatment role for remdesivir, um, hydroxychloroquine and other medicines there. So that th they're saying that they, they do not seem to be effective. Fair enough. Now let's look at what they are saying here. Despite the growing list of failed therapeutics in COVID-19, the FLCCC recently discovered that ivermectin, an anti-parasite medicine, was highly I was highly potent, real-world antiviral and anti-inflammatory uh, properties against SARS coronavirus 2 and COVID-19. Okay, this conclusion is based on the increasing study results reporting effectiveness not only within in vitro and animal models, but also in numerous clinical trials from centres and countries around the world. Um, but let's look at keep keep going. Um, Repeated, consistent, large magnitude improvements in clinical outcomes 
have now been reported when ivermectin is used not only as a prophylactic agent but also in mild, moderate and even severe disease states for multiple large random, randomised and observational controlled trials. But as we'll see, this is going to be the crux of the matter. Um, we are limited for uh, double-blind randomised controlled trials at the moment. Further data shows impact on population-wide health outcomes have resulted from multiple large natural experiments that appear to have occurred when various regional health ministries and governments or authorities within South American countries uh, started uh, initiated ivermectin distribution campaigns to their citizen population in hopes the drug would prove effective. The tight reproducible temporality, so, so that means that the improvements occurred after the ivermectin was started, there's a temporal relationship. Associated decreases in cases and case fatality rates in each of those regions compared to nearby regions without such campaigns suggests that ivermectin is proving to be a global solution to this pandemic. Bold claims uh, indeed. This is now further evidenced in recent incorporation of ivermectin as a prophylactic treatment agent in COVID-19 in the national treatment guidelines of Egypt as well as the state of Uttar Pradesh in northern India populated by 210 million people. So um, given that this group um, is so enthusiastic about ivermectin and g given the uh, the apparent high credibility of this group combined with East Virginia Medical School and we might we, well we'll see how we go for time but we have a paper we can look at um, it, it really is time for governments around the world to start reviewing this because we are entering into a winter of some urgency as regards the COVID-19 um, pandemic and then we have that um, one sentence review, review of recently available clinical trials uh, demonstrating efficacy of ivermectin in prophylaxis and treatment of COVID-19. And, you know, if you're interested, do go on, read that document. It gives a lot of detailed referenced information. It's, um, it's a well-written academic document. There's no question about that. So I think um, what this means is Governments around the world need to look at this, take this seriously and uh, start considering this. Now, in terms of the UK, I've heard no mention of this whatsoever as, as of now. Because even although the United States, thankfully, has now approved the, uh, the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine, we know that it's not going to have a significant effect on this pandemic for some time. Whereas a therapeutic or even a prophylactic agent could be uh, massively useful at this period of time. Now, what we're a bit limited on here really is, um, did, I, did I go, did I do that bit? I can't remember. Yeah, t t here we are, Outlook. To our knowledge, the current review uh, is the earliest to compile sufficient clinical data to demonstrate a strong signal of therapeutic efficacy based on numerous clinical trials in multiple disease phases. But they are honest and go on and say, however, it's limited by the fact that uh, a minority of studies have been published in peer-reviewed publications, with the majority of results compiled from manuscripts uploaded to medicine preprint servers, which of course haven't been peer-reviewed, or from uh, registered trials that have posted preliminary results on clinicaltrials.gov. Uh, therefore, it's imperative that our major national and international health care agencies be made aware of this emerging data in order to devote the necessary resources to more quickly validate these studies or indeed not validate these studies. We mustn't jump to conclusions and confirm the uh, major positive epidemiological impacts that have been recorded when ivermectin is widely distributed amongst the population and high illnesses or COVID-19 infection or, or, or indeed not confirm. So I, I completely agree that the case has been made that governments and authorising agencies around the world need to look at this with a level of urgency. From what I know so far, that's, that's what I can say. But it is important to remember that in, in this concept of evidence-based medicine, the, 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 the fact that we need to have um, evidence, doctors need evidence, any healthcare provider needs evidence for, for what they're doing. And there's really three components to that. One component, of course, is research 
preferably randomized or blind controlled trial data. But when we haven't got that, we, we, we do use expert opinion. So expert opinion, accumulated expert opinion, is the way that a lot of uh, healthcare interventions are actually evidenced at the moment. And the third is patient acceptability. So um, we've got a group of experts saying, yeah, th this seems to work. They're giving good evidence. We're in an emergency situation. I feel that government should move really, really quickly on this. Um, I think that's the main thing I want to say. I, I will give you just, just one trial I've, look I've been looking at. Um, and again, as, as this data said, we are, we are limited. But there again, we're in, in, a, in a difficult situation. So th th this is called the use of ivermectin is, is associated with lower mortality in hospitalized patients with uh, coronavirus disease. So this is part of what's called the ICON study. This was published back in October, actually. Um, and again, the, the link's there, read it for yourself. Research question, how does uh, Invermectin benefit hospitalized uh, coronavirus disease COVID-19 patients? So again, trouble is it's not a clinical trial, but they took conse consecutive hosp patients hospitalized. Four hospitals, mostly I think in Southern Florida, with confirmed COVID-19 between March and May treated with or without Invermectin. So again, it's not, it's, not a, it's not a proper clinical trial, but it's, it's a systematic collection of data, which is, is good, if not as good. The, the primary outcomes they looked at were people dying in hospital, and they looked at secondary outcomes as well to see if this was working. Secondary outcomes are mortality in patients with severe pulmonary involvement, extubation rates means taking the breathing tube out of their tracheas out of their throats, uh, extubation rates for mechanically ventilated patients and length of hospital stay. Right, so severe pulmonary involvement, these patients needed more than 50% oxygen or they needed to be actually invasively ventilated with a breathing tube. Results from the review, now they've got 280 patients here. Now this is not a, as big a sample as we would like, or obviously you want the biggest sample you can get, but that's what this study is reporting, so let's carry on. So Invermectin treated patients 173, patients not given Ivermectin 107. So essentially this is kind of like a control group, even though it's not a proper clinical trial. So the patients treated with ivermectin, the overall mortality was found to be 15%. Uh, the patients not given ivermectin, the overall fatality was uh, found to be 25%. Odds ratio of 0.52. Not quite half, but, 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 uh, but good. So, fair enough that the ivermectin group uh, that they found from this consecutively recruited study, ivermectin treated 15% mortality not given ivermectin, 25% mortality. Of course, these were patients already in poorly in hospital. Mortality associated with severe pulmonary involvement in the patients treated with ivermectin was uh, 39%. In the patients with severe pulmonary involvement not treated with ivermectin, uh, a big difference, nearly 81%. Many more people died in the group not given ivermectin. No significant difference were found in extubation rates or length of stay, so that didn't seem to make a difference. Uh, most patients in both groups also received hydroxychloroquine or azithromycin, or both. And this is the trouble with these studies. It, it's, it's, confused. it's confused by these confounding effects. This is the great thing about a proper clinical trial. You give one intervention and you measure the efficacy of this intervention because the control group is treated in exactly the same way, in every way apart from the fact it's not given the, intervent the, the intervention. This is clearly what we need. The question is, will regulatory authorities around the world take the accumulated evidence that's been presented so far um, by this group and consider that that is sufficient to, to modify their protocols? Is, is, the, is the question. Uh, as, anyway, as regards to this study we're looking at just now, um, as regards to this study here that we're just looking at, this one, that one, um, the authors interpret their results uh, as follows. Uh, ivermectin treatment was associated with lower mortality during treatment of COVID-19, especially in patients with severe pulmonary involvement. 
And of course, they go on to say that randomized controlled trials are needed to confirm these findings. Obviously, randomized controlled trials are needed to confirm these findings. So um, my role is not to pass judgment on it. I've just reported what other experts have said. But I do feel the evidence is strong enough for governments and regulatory authorities to start looking at this uh, as, as a matter of some priority. Because if we can save some lives this winter, that would be good because the winter is difficult in many parts of the world at the moment. OK, more on that as it comes. Um, if, we find, if I find any more trial data, I'll certainly bring it. But that is where I see we are at uh, at the moment with, with, with ivermectin.